which has now spread across the globe, had an operation spreading the American secrets to the Soviet Union. As said by the police themselves, the Rosenbergs were offered a deal in which their death sentences would be com commuted in return for admission of their guilt. They refused and are now going to be executed. Today is June 18, 1952. The couple is said to be executed, but before that, I begged the government for just one last interview to clear the air and to have the last words from this tedious couple. We go now to the fact corner to get everyone caught up on this, on what this couple did before we bring them out into the studio. In July 1950, Julius and Ethel Rosenberg were arrested under the charge of conspiracy to commit espionage. Although this charge is vague, it refers to them giving secrets of the development of the atomic bomb to the Soviet Union. A witness, David Greenglass, has admitted to the Rosenbergs recruiting him and his wife to spy in 1944. David's statement said that he provided a description of the bomb while Ethel took down notes. Because David and his wife, Ruth, have testified, David has only been sentenced 15 years in prison while Ruth has not yet been indicted. Meanwhile, the Rosenberg's lawyers have been working on the case for about a year now to try and prevent them from being executed. Everyone give a big warm welcome to our inmates who have traveled a long one hour and five minutes to get here to the studio from Sing Sing Prison, Osing, New York. As you both know, we're here for one reason and one reason only, to find the truth. We hear the story, but what's your take? Not saying I did it, but I feel like if someone were that smart to do those things, they deserve an award. Let this world crumble under the Soviet Union, you pigs. I did nothing. Exactly. We did nothing wrong. Well, as we can see, they are as innocent as Stalin himself. But let's dig a little deeper. And just for you guys, we've brought in one of the two most famous people, according to this case. First, we bring we call on Joseph himself. What do you want? I'm busy expanding my country. We will be huge by the time I'm done. We will be global. Well, as you can see, he's very confident. Do you two agree? I'm not saying I agree, but I believe that Joseph is one of the smartest and most loyal to his country, and I support that. Well, I'm not so sure that they're, that you're very innocent. Let's take this to the future fact corner to find out if fact corner to find out if Joseph's predictions are true. Well, due to the cause of economic failure, the USSR put at least 50 percent of manufactured utilities and tools into their military. This left the Soviet community to face economic hardships and economic decline. They eventually called off the arms race and ended the war in a peaceful manner. While your predictions were wrong, we can give a big hand, we can give a hand to Joseph here for his big imagination. <laughs> you really are a small man with big ideas. Oh, sure, pick on the small guy. I'll have you know I'm 5'4 and a half. Goodbye, smart mouth. I have things to do. Okay, goodbye, short stuff. You're 5'3? Anyway, now we call upon our very own, the United States President. But it seems true of a little criticism from me. So we have his bodyguard. I honestly never heard of her, but. He sent me some photos assuring me that she was 100% reliable. Why are we here again? Shh, I will get to you. We're on a tight schedule. We have a prison fight schedule for five for the last Easter Twinkie. I promise we'll wrap it up. Hey, can anyone hear me? I've been waiting here for like five minutes at the least. Yes, we hear. We can tell that you're tight with Truman. So can you give us a little info on what Truman plans to doing with these Soviet angels? I'm not allowed to give out that type of information. So what are you here for then? Um, that's classified. Tell me, what isn't classified? My favorite color is blue, and long live Marka. Gotta go. 
me and Give Em Hell Harry have to go and get our hair did before the next speech. I'm out. All right. Wait, we have just, we're have we getting close to the end of the hour, and now we have heard from all of the involving the Rosenberg case. Let's hear one last side of the story from these two before we've, as we've heard, they must leave to get their dibs on that keister Twinkie. I'd like to say that I'm not guilty no matter how much evidence you find. And may you all realize that I did nothing wrong. You can all believe in evidence and actual facts, but I believe in myself. Honestly, when it comes down to being killed, it's all his fault. Well, goodbye to you, and the best of luck to all your delight that, to all the delightful stuff that happens in the penitentiary. May you rot there for your life. Before we end the show, before we end the show, let's get let's get the real facts here so that you get an education. For as this is supposed to be uh, an educational show to inform you on all the true facts that happened in this hard time. In the end, David Greenglass served 10 years in prison instead of 15, and Ruth Greenglass had never even been indicted. The Rosenbergs never confessed, which resulted in their execution on June 19, 1963. I'd like to thank the band for always backing us up. I'd also like to thank our guests and... <laughs> Should I just be like, hey? And the cameraman. But most of all, I'd like to thank me. Oh, and of course you guys for watching this and thinking, wow, I learned a lot. Goodbye, world, and may we meet again on next time on Late Night 9-11, Late Night Boston Marathon, and the, the, spe the spectacular Late Night Aliens Take Over the World. Goodbye, America.